Hi and welcome to section 55 of my SwiftUI course. Today we're going to learn how to adapt our app for the iPad. And we're also going to make sure that it listens to screen orientation change as well as slide over which lets you have multiple apps in the same screen. And that's a big challenge because the user can resize dynamically. So because of that, if your app has to adapt for the iPad, you have to accommodate very small screens such as the old iPhone SE, which has a width of 320. I'm going to explain more in detail when we get there. But first of all, let's switch to homeview.swift. So because we're using the environment object, I'm going to have to include that in the preview. So let's switch to home view underscore previews. Then after home view, we're going to add dot environment object user store parentheses. Now let's go back to the top. And before moving on, let's test this on the iPad. So I'm going to go to devices and I'm going to switch to iPad Pro 11 inch. Now, the first issue that we see here is that the card is too wide and that's an easy fix. The second issue is the angle of the 3D here. Again, that's another easy fix. But the most important issue is not seen here. We actually have to see it in a simulator or on the device. So let's run the app. So command R. And here, if you change the orientation of the screen by doing command left arrow or right arrow, you're going to see that on the landscape mode, uh, we have the screen size that is not correct. And that happens when you're trying to detect the screen size and use that number for animations or for layout. And it's pretty static. It's even more obvious when you use slide over. So you can swipe from the bottom and then long press drag, put another app to the right. You're going to see that the layout does not adapt well. And these are the resolutions. So you can have split screen like that or have a width of 375. And if you put it to portrait mode, you're going to see that this width here is 320. Most designers will be quick to judge and say that they don't have to accommodate for the older screen, such as the old iPhone SE with a width of 320. Well, that is wrong because in slide over, this resolution is still relevant. Now let's go back and see why we try to detect the screen size. I'm going to scroll a little bit and you can see I'm using the screen value. So this is great for prototyping, but if you have to adapt for the iPad for slide over or for screen orientation change between portrait and landscape, you should be using geometry reader instead. And to use that, we're going to go back to the very top. So home view, and we're going to find the body. We're going to put the geometry reader at the root level. So wrapping even the scroll view. So let's command click scroll view and then embed in, let's say VStack. Instead of VStack, we're going to change it to geometry reader. And we're going to name the value bounce in. And anytime that you do that, you're going to have to add self to every single value, which is a very good practice anyways. So we're going to add self for each value that gives us an error until we don't have any more error. So if you scroll down a little bit, you're going to find section view. And this is where we use screen.width. And also we're using screen.width for the frame. And the reason why we did this is because we wanted to avoid that extra animation when you're loading the UI. So instead of using a static value, we're going to use geometry reader, which is dynamic. So bounds.size.width. And the same for section view, bounds.size.width. Let me run this again by doing command R and voila, you can see that thanks to geometry reader, I'm always getting the correct size. This is really cool. Traditionally, we would have to listen to the screen orientation change and then we would have to resize the screen. But geometry reader makes it all dynamic and we didn't have to do any of that listening. It does it for us. Now let's test the other screens, such as the content view. And this is where we see that the layout needs a lot of work because when we started this, we did not anticipate that we needed to adapt for a width of 320. And also we hard coded some values. So for example, this bottom card is supposed to be hidden. And when it's in full screen mode, it's supposed to be in the middle of the screen. 
So let's apply the second important technique, which is the max width. We're going to go to content view. I'm going to scroll up a little bit, switch to content view .swift, And then I'm going to resume. If the screen is too big here, we can always resize it to 50%. And we're going to take a look at the bottom card. Let's scroll down a little bit to find bottom card view. And here you can see that we have hard coded these numbers. So the offset when it's hidden, so we're setting it to 1000. And when it's active, we're setting it to 360. We shouldn't use hard coded numbers, which means that we should be using geometry reader. Now we don't need to set the geometry reader at the root level. In this case, because we're using a bottom card view and it's taking the full screen, we are essentially getting the screen size because geometry reader gets the size of the parent. So I'm going to command click bottom card view embed in vstack, set it to geometry reader. Then I'm going to get a value called bounds in. As a result, I'm going to have to add self everywhere. So let's apply the suggestions. Then we're going to replace 1000 by the screen height. So bounds.size.height. But now we're running into a second problem, which is that the screen height is within the save area. So there's an easy fix for this, which is let's go to the end of geometry reader. By the way, there's a trick here. You can double click after the curly braces and it's going to find the end of that curly braces. So we're going to add ignore self area dot all. And voila, this solves our problem. There's also another way to fix this because using ignore save area on a parent container can affect your content. We can detect the size of the status bar as well as the home indicator. First of all, let me just put this in another line and I'm going to comment this because I don't want to use both techniques at the same time. So I'm going to go back here where it says bounds.size.height. I'm going to do plus bounds.save area insets camel case. Make sure to write it correctly and dot top. We should also add the bottom part. So plus bounds dot safe area insets dot bottom. Now this is actually really powerful. Why? Because we are essentially detecting the status bar size and the home indicator using geometry reader. And you can imagine you can do so many cool things about this by adding, let's say, a background to the status bar, animating it, or also to the home indicator area. Next, we're going to change 360 by half of the height of the screen. So it's going to be bounds.size.height forward slash, so divided by two. Great. So now we can test this. I'm going to click on play and voila. Now I want to talk about the width for the content. Since on the iPad, we can have really big screen, especially in landscape mode, the text can be too long to read. So in design, you should never have text that is too long to read, have more than 90 characters per line, which is why we always want to have the text to wrap inside a certain size of a container. And here we have some really good references. So we have the small modal box, the medium size, and the bigger size. So I was really curious to see what is the maximum size for the content that Apple has in terms of the box. And here you can find that if I create a rectangle, the width happens to be roughly 712. Let me zoom in just to make sure that we are precise here. So that's the number that we get. Back to Xcode, we know that the smallest size of the iPad is 1024 by 768, which means that this width of this container here is too large. So we need to limit the width of this container. We're going to command click the bottom card view, jump to definition. And at the very end, where it says max width infinity, we're going to set it to 712. If we test this, we're going to see that the size is correct, but it's not centering properly. And that's because geometry reader doesn't align child elements the same way as a stack. So we're going to have to either create a parent container for this UI, or we can add a new frame. So dot frame after shadow, we're going to set max width 
2.infinity. So now this should be aligning properly and let's test that in the simulator. So you can see that the UI does a really good job at adapting, specifically this one, if I set it to landscape, you can see that it has a max width. So if it's more or less, it's going to adapt based on the max width. Now back to portrait, we haven't adapted yet for a screen of 320, so let's do that. A common mistake that people make is to use images and these images are not resizable and they are too big for the screen and they're going to push the whole content. First of all, it would be good to be able to preview that specific small size. So we're gonna go ahead and switch to the content view previews. And here, what we can do is to create a fixed size preview. So dot preview layout dot fixed using a width of 320 and a height of 667. This is the size of the old iPhone SE. Let me just stop the preview to update it. This is helpful. Now I'm going to switch to title view. So I'm gonna find that from my menu. And you can find here that the image is bigger than the screen. So what I can do here is to use dot resizable. And then let's make sure to set the aspect ratio to content mode dot fit. And I want to make sure that my image does not go super big. So I can do dot frame and set a max width of 375. So this is still too big and that's because of the cards, not because of the image because I'm using a max width. So let's go ahead and switch to the cards. I'm going to go to the very top. Then I'm going to scroll a little bit and you can see here I'm not using a max width and I should be doing that. So I'm going to set instead of width to max width, but here I cannot mix max width and height. So I'm going to have to put height in another frame. So let me just cut this part, remove the comma and add that frame and paste that height. Let me do the same for the other cards, but this time I'm going to copy the entire frame modifier and I'm going to go to the other card this time back card view again and I'm going to set to max width, remove height with a comma and then paste the frame height. Let's do one last one for the card view, remove the height, set max width and then paste the frame modifier with a height. So now you can see that our UI is looking great on a small phone and we can test that on the simulator so it's working perfectly with this super small screen size if you make it slightly bigger it's going to center one tiny thing we can fix here is there's an issue with the 3d transform on orientation change i'm not sure if this is temporary but you can easily fix this by disabling the 3d transform so going back to xcode we can just comment a rotation 3d effect for both back card view. All right, so today we learned some really important techniques such as using geometry reader to detect the screen size, but also using max width to ensure that our content does not exceed a certain size. Now you can see that the layout adapts really well thanks to geometry reader, but also it listens to screen orientation change. And on top of that, we've managed to adapt our UI to a super small screen such as the old iPhone SE. And now the layout does a beautiful job at adapting dynamically as the user resizes the screen. And we're not done. There are more things to fix, such as the corner radius. We also want to make sure that the layout works on a screen that does not have a notch, such as the non-pro iPad, as well as the new iPhone SE. So I look forward to teach you that in the next session. See you then.